New multi-viewer magic from Ensemble Designs. Stunning detail and simple setup. Easy, click-to-fill configuration from your Mac, PC, or iPad. The new Avenue Multiviewer from Ensemble Designs. Hi, I'm Mike Gratisello with Broadcast Engineering Magazine. We're here this morning with Eric Moreno. He's a senior vice president of the uh, Fox Network Group, and also you work with the, uh, I guess it's called the Mobile Content Venture, which is the Dial Initiative. So welcome. Good morning, Mike. Good to see you. We're here at the NAB 2013 show. Um, so um, just to get right into it as far as mobile DTV, because I know that's your baby, so to speak. Um, we've had a standard since 2009 from the ATSC. And here we are in 2013. We have about 150 stations or so on the air with mobile TV. Is that progress in your mind? Yeah. Is that where you want it to be? Absolutely. Well, I appreciate the, the opportunity to give you an update. Absolutely believe there's progress. Okay. I mean, you know, ultimately putting together an ecosystem, a brand new uh, business is takes time. Sure. And we have created, imagine that the analogy here is creating the internet and building purpose uh, built devices to be able to handle the video and the service offering. Okay. So it's going to always take time. Okay. Now, could it have gone faster? Absolutely. Do we want to be able to engage the ecosystem to move faster? Absolutely. And I think on that end, we've had a little bit of success even coming into the show. Okay. We had uh, additional 25 uh, stations lighting up mm -hmm. or uh, committing to light up. Yep. It includes Sinclair, and we're grateful for their participation. It includes the flagship WCBS station in New York. Uh, additional stations from Lynn and obviously our existing partners. Okay. And those continue to be uh, exciting uh, developments because one of the things we've learned about the service is that consumers are liking it, the technology is working, they just want more content. Right, and it's, they also want receivers, obviously. That's exactly right. So on that front, for example, we are pleased with the launch of the two initial devices, the right. Elgato and Escort accessories for the iPad and the iPhone, mm -hmm. as well as the Samsung Metro PCS handset. Right. If you go to our booth here, you will see the dual tuner tablet, you'll see the car implementation, and you'll see uh, an Android device that's coming. So we continue to work on the devices. So that's the thing, you're working both sides of the equation, the chicken and the egg, right. to make sure that we get this ecosystem off the ground and thriving. Right. Um, now, uh, from, from the kind of political standpoint, there's kind of two groups working on this, the mobile content venture and also was a group called the uh, 500, Mobile 500 Light Alliance, right? That's right. Um, why are you guys working more closely together is my question. It seems like it would, it would help the, the initiative to do that. I think, look, I think, uh, first of all, we're very coordinated. Okay. And I think one of the key things that we've tried to make sure that folks understand, including the press, is we're all driving towards the same goal right. over a common technology platform. So we're both using the same open standard of mobile DTV, the A153. Right. And then more importantly, at this stage, if a station lights up, mm -hmm. it will support the mobile 500 application and the dial application. Right. And so for us, ultimately, we're much, much closer than uh, the press likes to make it to be. Okay. Uh, could we be one group driving towards the same direction and rowing in the same direction right. uh, completely as one? Absolutely, and you know that's something we'd love to be able to continue to have dialogue with. And uh, that, that's ongoing, so to speak? Always. Again, we want to make sure we stay coordinated because at right. the end of the day, this is one where I've always said, personally, the ability for the, and the ability for the industry to work together is a critical component of making this not only A, available to all the U.S. markets, mm -hmm. and B, to make it a very robust product offering. Great. Um, speaking of devices, you know the only real carrier so far that's carried a Samsung phone is Metro PCS. Yes, they're about to merge with T-Mobile. Is that good news for DTV, mobile DTV? Look, at the end of the day, one of the biggest challenges, and I, I am always very candid with that challenge, is that we had a, a very good fit with Metro PCS. Right. If you know anything about them? They're the, they are the fifth largest carrier until T-Mobile buys them. They have 14 million subscribers. Uh, in sorry, nine million subscribers in 14 metro markets. Okay. What was good is. Those 14 markets were basically a subset of the dial markets. So it made sense. T-Mobile is a national carrier. Right. They would like, and I'm you know, not speaking for them, but I right. know this, they're going to want 90 plus percent coverage. Well, that's where mobile 500 stations, which usually represent smaller markets, and dial stations, which usually are the bigger markets, need to work together to then be able to get and have the network available for T-Mobile to then jump in. And right. so I, I'm never unrealistic about what it's necessary to take to get to a commercial deal with a carrier. We've shown we can do it, right. but we as the broadcasters have to make the first move to not only make the network available and then the content available. Right, right. Now the Dial Initiative was really a campaign to tell consumers what product could receive mobile DTV. Yes. How successful has that been? Look, at the end of the day, at, at this stage, we've been very much, we've been very deliberate, much to the chagrin of much of the industry, which <laughs> is always uh, almost in a, in, a, in a funny way, sitting back and mo mor Monday morning quarterbacking it. Right. One of the things that we understand about our platforms as broadcasters is we have a big megaphone. We can drive to action. 
So one of the things we've done is we have a limited set of devices in a limited set of markets. Right. We have a great channel lineup in Atlanta, in Los Angeles, in Dallas, in New York. And so that's where we've been focusing the push along with Metro PCS, along with our uh, Elgato and device partners. So right now we've been testing out a lot and right. to see what works and what resonates. How can we go ahead and raise awareness? But we haven't turned on the megaphone by any stretch of the imagination. Our view is that at the end of the day, we need some of these devices that are coming and right. we need additional robustness of lineup by market, by DMAs, to be able then to then really coordinate the messaging. But at the end of the day, we have now honed that messaging into a very fine value proposition for the consumer. And the word dial, is that kind of accepted among the consumers? Do you I, think? Think, I think ultimately it will come to represent that. We think at the end of the day, it's a very fun retro wink to, uh, you know, to almost the bunny ears and the antenna, which we still have to live with. Right. Uh, but folks that, that we have shown it, even in our research, get it, get what it is, and uh, ultimately appreciate the fact that they don't need Wi-Fi, 3G, or a data bill to enjoy the local broadcast content. Exactly. Uh, on that note, um, we've heard talk about you know the service that brokers are going to offer. Right now it's free, but at some point it's going to be an on-demand type of product, which means cost. Do you see that coming in the future? Look, I that, It's necessary for a business, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, the path to monetization is, is critically important for our company, certainly for ours, uh, speaking for Fox. Right. Um, the bottom line, though, is, uh, you know, and I've said this from a theoretical perspective, uh, I'm a business development guy, we right. always anticipate these things. Conditional access was important to give us the ability to have one of four revenue streams. Ad supported, paid subscription, because sure. we have authentication. Absolutely. You know, a, an authentication to either a paid video bill or authentication to a wireless bill. Okay. Our preferred view from Fox, and just speaking for Fox, sure. is that we ultimately want it to be with the existing um, you know, uh, paid video providers. Okay. And so for us, being able to monetize via authentication is, is a great thing. Which brings me to a point, mm -hmm. which may, you may or may not have thought about. There's always the talk about SyncBack or, or other streaming applications that, that broadcasters are using. Right. Our view is dial and the mobile TV business is complementary because a consumer ultimately just wants to get our great content. Correct. And so for us, mobile TV is the friendliest way to do it, but mm -hmm. it won't work everywhere per se, just as the internet or IP-based approach won't work everywhere. Sure. By having the two radios and the two functionalities, we as broadcasters are achieving the goal we should have strategically, which is to connect with our audience and be able to deliver our content. To them. So that, that means then the kind of combination of over-the-air technology and streaming. That's right, at the end of the day, that should be ultimately the product offering that a broadcaster can then choose to do. And right. that's what we're talking to a lot of our station partners who have sometimes thought about it as an either or. Right. And we're now honing that message to say it shouldn't ever have to be. Great. What about the issue of content ownership? Now Fox, as Fox owns a lot of content, so you sit in a good position. But as a local station, let's say a, a w, uh, CW affiliate in Iowa, What's the value they're going to offer the, the community on mobile TV? Look, at the end of the day, this is one where the content owners have to figure out how they want to reach their audience, right? And so, uh, for us, ultimately, this is a service that has kind of three value propositions and elements. One is, broadcast content is still the most valuable content, most watched content, uh, if, you know, relative to anything out there, including on demand. It just is, from a tonnage perspective, from a branding perspective. Two, by using mobile DTV, you're able to give the consumer that tonnage of content with no data bill, which is something that, again, maybe is not a problem yet, but it is coming and it is coming fast. Okay. And three, ultimately consumers, again, want to have choice. They want to have that Absolutely. ability to both not only watch maybe a Netflix episode, but then maybe watch that CW show that they do enjoy or that sporting event. Right. For us, at the end of the day, we're never going to speak on behalf of the consumer. Okay. What we want to do is give them a consumer choice and a great product experience that ultimately is satisfying to them, that provides data back to us as content owners, as advertisers, right. and um, ultimately that's our vision. And we're going to be very patient about that. And are you working on kind of carriage deals like that to, for the future of, let's say the Super Bowl's on CBS, a Fox station wants to run on the mobile TV, there's got to be some kind of agreement there. Well, at this stage, our, we, we've kept it in the much more, you know, keep it simple camp. So, okay. you know, WCBS right now, for example, will lit their station, they're going to carry their 24-7 linear program, and that's yep. the service. Sure. We have the ability to obviously carry other content um, you know, for example, our, our, our duopoly in Los Angeles, Yes. Our um, uh, my network TV has enough spectrum that we could carry other valuable content, said our regional sports network in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that application is not built yet. We haven't, um, you know, the, the technical capabilities, there's more of right. a business choice of A, do we want to make that content available, and B, how and who retails it. 
Right. And so that's again part of the evolution of this ecosystem is we're figuring out as we go, we have good ideas, we have and are putting in the work and making the investments, but it's one where again we have to nurture along. Great. The last question is about Spectrum itself in general. You know, we have this big auction coming up. Mm -hmm. How is that going to affect Multi, do you think, or is it going to affect it? Is there enough Spectrum right now to do what you need to do? And if there's some, if something's taken away, will it still be enough? Look, at the end of the day, our view is that Spectrum is the key ingredient that the wireless companies want to make to provide IP-based services and that the broadcasters should be looking at as an industry, as an asset that can be leveraged to deliver their content to the consumers. That's right. ultimately where we sit. Should the auction be successful, right. then yes, there will be less spectrum for us to provide these services. Correct. Our argument is simple. That is a macro level decision made on a distributed basis by individual broadcasters mm -hmm. uh, relative to their own choices, whether they want to participate or not. And we just have to live with, with whatever the outcome is. There's very little we can say or do with right. regards to the macro level issue of the auction itself. Right. However, we would posit to every broadcaster and we're putting our money where our mouth is as Fox, as NBC Universal, as dial members, as Mobile 500 members, right. that we believe in Mobile DTV. And we're investing in building that network, putting the spectrum to good use, and delivering to the consumer something that is very consistent, even with the broadband plan promulgated by the FCC a few years back. Correct. That's a winner in our book, okay. so we should we continue to invest. Excellent. And finally, you know, look at the future, five years from now, where do you see Mobile DTV? Look, at the end of the day, our view is that um, there is, uh, there's an ability and an opportunity for broadcasters to be able to make use of their spectrum and to deliver uh, content very, very efficiently and to build a brand new business. The way I like to explain to people is that mobile DTV is complementary to what we do well today. We have an ad supported business, we have a dual Absolutely. revenue stream Absolutely. with cash retrans and we now have the opportunity to build a network, I mean for a few hundred million dollars, let's never lose sight of that, and be able to then deliver and charge for either the bandwidth and the content. Those are just purely incremental. And yet, at the end of the day, what's challenging is we need to convince everybody that that's the opportunity. And that's where I think, again, a little bit of the slower progress has happened. But again, we're making the progress. We're offering up our service to 57% of the U.S. today. Consumers are liking the service. And so for us, at the end of the day, we remain excited at our prospects and we'll keep plugging away. Great. Thank you very much, Eric. Great. Thanks great so job. much. Thank you.